Hey everybody, one that always bored, never boring. You join me today at my workstation, which I have recently reorganized. And I thought it might be interesting to quickly run through what I have been up to recently. The first thing I've been doing is reorganizing my workspace. I have recently found back out this old beast. This is the old wooden games workshop workstation. They haven't made this for a long time and I love it. I had mine packed away for quite some time, but I got it back out and it's really simple. It's a really, really simple design. It's just wooden base and then the one shelf, which actually has some holes cut out of it for paint brushes and paint pots. And I just think that this is a very simple, elegant way to arrange a workstation. And I do love it. It's uh, one of my one of my favorite things for organizing my workspace. So. I got that back out, I dusted that down and I've rearranged my desk, I've moved some bookshelves around and I'm hoping that's just going to make it a little bit easier when I film painting guides and assembly guides. And speaking of assembly, one of the major things that I've been dealing with over the last couple of days is assembling the troll and the unicorn miniature that I bought for the Harry Potter miniatures adventure game. I've already done videos looking at those in depth in terms of what comes in the packs for them but I didn't actually show them assembled in the videos. They took quite a bit of work. Uh, well, well, I, I take that back. The troll didn't. This is the troll. The troll went together very, very easily. He was just a, a main body and then two arms. And uh, you just had to cut the arms off of the uh, sprue and glue them on. I had an incorrect base with my troll. So I had to find um, a replacement. This is actually a 40 millimeter base. I did have a 50 millimeter base and I think he probably would have been better off on a 50 mil but the 50 mil base I had didn't have the little ridge whereas this one had a ridge which is more in keeping with the bases that come uh, with the Knight Models miniatures. And that's a really nice miniature. I'm really impressed with that. It looks really good and uh, I do intend to use him in other games. The second miniature was a lot more problematic. If you watched my unboxing for the unicorn, you will know that there was a lot of flashing, there was a lot of mold lines, it didn't look like it was going to fit together very well, and yeah, that was pretty much the case. The final miniature looks really nice. It's a really nice pose. Um, I really like it a lot. I think it looks absolutely lovely, but it was an absolute nightmare to put together. There was a lot of flashing, um, especially under the tail. There was underfill all under the mane that had to be cut out. There was uh, mold lines up the horn. And when you attach the two pieces together, um, there was a visible ridge on the top and the bottom parts didn't line up at all. There was like a millimeter overhang. So that all had to be shaved away. And you can see I've had to use green stuff to try and fill in areas fill the gaps and uh, there might still be a little bit more filing and filling to do before I can undercoat and paint him but at least he is ready for the tabletop for now. Really nice miniature but um, an obscene amount of work involved in getting him put together and I would have expected better from Knight Models. Assembling miniatures isn't the only thing I've been doing for the Harry Potter miniatures adventure game. Uh, if you watched my video, my playthrough, you will know that I actually ended up liking the game more than I expected to. It is not the best game in the world, but I actually really liked the whole situation of having wizards casting spells at each other. The spells have a cooldown mechanism, so you can't use them every turn. And there was a, an emphasis on scoring objectives rather than killing your opponents, and I really liked it. But I had a copy of the first edition which had really, really terrible components. So one of the things I've been working on over the last week is upgrading those components, but trying to do it in the cheapest way possible, trying to do it with just stuff that I had around anyway. The first thing I did was um, I obviously sleeved all of the large cards. And the first sleeves I tried were these Ultra Pro ones. They were actually a little bit too narrow, but I did have some slightly wider sleeves and I have no idea where they came from. They're not very good quality ones, they're very flimsy, but um, it's something to put over the cards and protect them. So that's what I did with those. I also sleeved all of the little cards and I did not have any mini card sleeves at all. 
So I went on eBay and I found somebody selling Mayday game sleeves. These are the 41 by 63 millimeter sleeves and they fit perfectly. And I think including postage, I paid three pounds for a pack of 100, which wasn't too bad. I also wanted to do something about the tokens in the game because the tokens are absolutely horrific. They are the thinnest tokens that I have ever seen. As I said before, this was rectified for the second edition of the game, but really, the first edition of the game should never have come out with components like this because they are awful. So um, again, I would turn to what I already had on hand and what I had on hand were 25 millimeter Renedra bases. I have a whole bunch of those. Um, there's, there's some up here. Here they are. Um, you can pick these up um, for a couple of quid and, and you get loads. I think it's 30... 30 bases for two pounds or something on eBay. Um, really not very much at all, and they're really useful. I've done a video on them before, um, and I've always got these kicking around because they're good for making uh, counters, they're good for basing up different miniatures for Dungeons & Dragons. Um, all sorts of uses for them. So um, that's what I was using to sort out these tokens. Because some of these tokens, um, I've actually got quite nice artwork on them. These are... Um, objective tokens and they've all got little bits of different treasure on them so um, you can find uses for those if they were on uh, better quality stock so for example this this is like a palantir here you could use that um, to play that free game that came in white dwarf magazine this month so what i've done is i've glued the cardboard tokens to renedra bases it was the simplest easiest thing to do really these are the cooldown clocks for the spells you've got the ready spell and then you've got the activated spell side and i've stuck one token to each side of the renedra base and then i've covered the whole thing with an artist gloss um just to protect it the thing here to note is that obviously the tokens are normally double sided so you are using two tokens for each counter which means you will have half as many counters as you normally would so what i have done is i've also scanned these tokens so that i can print off more on photograph paper and then do the same thing again but just glue the photograph paper onto the renedra bases of course you could do something like use the coin cases or whatever uh, there are other options available but i was working with what i had and what i had was renedra bases so i've done that with the cooldown counters and i'm going to do it with the objective markers as well except i'm not going to worry about making them two-sided i'm just going to put the cool picture side face up on Renedra bases. I just haven't got round to that yet. For the power tokens, I'm not worrying about the card at all. I have replaced them all with glass beads in two different colors. If you watch my playthrough of the game, you will have seen these in use. Similarly, you would have seen me using D6 to mark wounds on the characters instead of using the counters for wounds because um, it was a little bit easier to deal with. So that is what I have been up to with Harry Potter and I am hoping to do a video of the solo play rules at some point in the near future as soon as I can free up my schedule enough to get that filmed. Of course the other major thing on my plate at the moment is my Hero Quest restoration project which I have been covering on my channel in some depth. We're still working on that. You can see up there we have the Barbarian is all cleaned up and waiting a primer so that he can be painted up and this box here is actually full of the last of the miniatures that have had their Dettol bath so all of my miniatures are now stripped they all have the old paint removed they're ready to be undercoated and uh, we're ready to go from there and I also had a really exciting delivery recently my very good friend Dale um, who was back in the day my main opponent for fantasy battle and who went on all of my adventures with me into the darkest dungeons of Hero Quest, Advanced Hero Quest, Warhammer Quest. He tromped around the world of Talisman with me. Uh, most weekends we could be found exploring the dark depths of some hellish place, trying to loot monsters. And he contacted me and offered me a copy of the Hero Quest Keller's Keep expansion, which was awesome. So I now have a copy of Keller's Keep. Furthermore, I had already gone online and purchased a copy of the Return of the Witch Lord expansion. So I now have Hero Quest and the first two major expansions for it. All of which um, 
need to be painted up and uh, given a little bit of love and attention. The actual um, expansions I have are all complete and um, don't need any restoration work on them apart from paint jobs so I don't think I will be necessarily covering those on the channel because obviously all of the miniatures in those expansions come in the base game so if I do a video painting the base game miniatures you have already seen how I intend to do those expansions as well but it is absolutely amazing to have uh, this in the collection I'm very very excited and uh couldn't be happier and obviously massive massive thanks to Dell for that but that's not all because while I have said in the past that I have the best subscribers in the world I also have the very best friends in the world because when Dale sent me the copy of Keller's Keep he also sent me a copy of Advanced Hero Quest a much loved copy of Advanced Hero Quest that does need some work so I now have another project in the wings for when I have dealt with Hero Quest I have a copy of Advanced Hero Quest and Eagle-eyed viewers may already have seen that there is a small metal skaven on my workstation which I picked up on eBay because I saw him going for a decent price and he is waiting to be added to this copy of Advanced Hero Quest because it is my intention to gradually fill out Advanced Hero Quest with some classic old hammer miniatures that I am hoping to be painting and showcasing on the channel as and when they come in. I'm excited about that and I hope other people will look forward to seeing some old hammer miniatures and some work being done to advanced hero quest once I finally get my copy of hero quest finished. But again that is all thanks to my friend Dale. Unfortunately Dale lives a long way away from me now and we don't get to see each other very often. He has appeared on some of my videos when I first started the channel he appeared on some of my 40k videos but we don't really see each other that much and he spends a lot more of his time with computer games than board games these days and in fact he actually has a Twitch channel. He goes under the handle of multiple me and he does run-throughs of World of Warcraft. He is very very knowledgeable on World of Warcraft I think if there's something he doesn't know it probably isn't worth knowing if you want to go and check out his his twitch channel I will put some information down in the video description I know we would appreciate you going by and checking it out if you're interested in World of Warcraft it's probably worth taking a look and seeing the stuff that he is getting up to that information will be down below but I think that's just about it for now as you can see I have been busy and I like to have a few different things going on at any one time so I still have other painting projects um, going on I have Dungeons and Dragons stuff that I need to be dealing with I still got some bot war miniatures that I want to finish off there's all sorts of things going on and hopefully something coming along down the line that you will find interesting but for now the major focus is getting the hero quest restoration project finished hopefully getting harry potter back to the table and then i am very much looking forward to turning my attention to advanced hero quest but that is it from me for now thank you so much for listening if you've enjoyed the video please consider pressing the like button if there's something turning up on the channel at some point uh, that you think you might be interested in please consider subscribing if you're not already do so and hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.